So joining us next up here on CBS Sports Radio and Sunday Morning Football is one of my really good friends and one of the guys I love having here on the show whenever we can to pick his brain. He has one of the more infamous moments against the Patriots in the playoffs. It was the can't wait game where the New York Jets went up to Foxborough and knocked off the number one seed New England Patriots in the 2010 season. Now He's an analyst for us here on CBS. You hear him weekdays on WFAN in New York. My man, Bart Scott, joining us this morning here in studio to get ready for the games. And Bart, let's start here. Did you believe this season that we were seeing a more vulnerable Patriots team than we had in previous in previous years? This is the most flawed Patriots team that it has been since Brady's been there. Brady's going to have to do more. But the thing is, the field isn't as tough as it used to be. You don't have to go through Peyton Manning anymore. Now you have a young kid that's trying to be you. You have probably the future MVP, but he's green. Can you? Is it enough? Does Brady and Belichick have enough Jedi mind tricks to confuse this kid and say, hey, you're one year too early, your time will come, but just not on my watch? What makes you say they're the most flawed version of the Patriots team we've seen? Well, they don't really have a vertical threat. They thought they had that in Flash Gordon. He wasn't able to be available. He let him down. They made a trade for him. Gronk isn't Gronk. Although he was worth his weight in gold last week in the running game, he's not the threat that he needs anymore. Anytime you see Jamal Adams, you know, a good young player, able to take him one-on-one, you know it's an issue. So now he doesn't demand the double team. So now he doesn't free things up for Hogan. Because it's really like the, the Patriots kill you by death by a thousand paper cuts. It's not usually Edelman that, that, that delivers a dagger. It's not Gronk that delivers a dagger. It's Philip Dorsett. It's Hogan. But now it's harder for Hogan to be able to hurt you because now you're one-on-one with Gronk. So you have safeties over the top. So last week when we watched um, just blow out the Chargers, did you feel like suddenly the Patriots put it all together or did the Chargers have a flawed game plan Terrible execution, bad coaching. Well, we we gave Gus Bradley all the credit in the world for what he was able to come up with against Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Seven defensive backs. Seven defensive backs. Seven defensive backs. But he failed to make adjustments when his game plan didn't work. And when I say his game plan didn't work, whenever you see a dude in the backfield with a neck roll, the odds are it's going to be a run. (laughs) And the run is going to be downhill. And he couldn't adjust to it. And this Chargers team was flawed all year. They, they're on their backup to the backups and linebackers. And also, me being, you know, dealing with the death of his daughter, coming back on a short week, not really all the way focused. And then the other two interior guys had no answers. The difference this week is, yes, D. Ford, you can compare him to Bosa and you compare him, you can compare him to Ingram. But, man, Justin Houston is a grown-ass man. Not only can he rush the passer, he can set the edge. And Chris Jones in the inside in the A-gap is exactly what you need to rattle Brady. Interior pressure. But you can't have interior pressure by putting a outside linebacker there because they'll just maul you in the run game. Chris Jones, 15 and a half sacks this year, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he has pass rush moves, but also he has the length that Brady's going to have to alter his thorn windows when he puts that big paw up. We saw it happen when they played the Colts. We saw Nelson, as good as he is, and it's, I don't believe it's not too many better at the guard position, was anchoring and trying to fight. But Chris Jones is so tall that he just engulfed him and was able to still be effective and bat balls down regardless if you're able to anchor or not. Bart Scott joins us here on Sunday Morning Football looking ahead to today's AFC Championship game. So you played on teams that were not, they did not fear Tom Brady and the Patriots. You played on the, the Jets team that went up there and won the playoffs. You played on the Ravens team that consistently played them tough. Do you feel like Andy Reid and the Chiefs will be fearless like you guys were, or do you worry about them today in this matchup? Well, the thing is, I know Andy Reid knows how to coach, and he can go he can go play for play with Bill Belichick. We've seen that before. He's been able to consistently circle the defense. Uh, we talk about a couple of years ago when you know they beat him early in the season, was able to get to the edges consistently different ways. Bill Belichick's going to take away Kelsey. I think one of the matchups is going to be, how do I get explosive plays by Tyreek Hill? But what I'm going to do is, and what I would like to see Andy, or what Andy should consider, is moving Travis Kelsey out to the wide receiver position. Because when you put him there, you can't double him, or it's harder to double him. 
But when he's in line, you can he- get help by linebackers. You can get help by safeties and corners and all that. When he's out one-on-one, the only help you can get is by your defensive backs, which allows you to put uh, Tariq Hill in the slot, which is a problem because you can't jam him because he's off the ball, and you can motion him left and right. And that's how you can dictate the matchups that you want to get those explosive plays. The X factor for the, for, for the offense, for the Patriots, is going to be Hogan. He's going to have to get one of those vertical shots for Philip Dorsett, one of those Edelman double passes or something like that, an explosive gadget. Because I don't think the big players are going to be there consistently for the Patriots because they can max protect and block it up and take shots, but Edelman's not a vertical threat. Hogan's a guy that has to get built up speed or has to surprise you with the play. And I think that Bob Sutton's been with the, with the Jets. He understands that you can't play zone against Brady because he'll eat you up. Death by a thousand paper cuts. You got to get in their face. You got to go man to man. You got to give people help, but you don't. You can't allow them space. Space is what will kill Kansas City. And on the flip side, if I'm the Patriots, I have to run the ball because I know that I can't keep pace with this explosive offense. We'll see what the weather does because I think that even if the weather's bad like it was last week, that's advantage Kansas City because they have explosive athletes that can get explosive plays. We saw the Colts, which is a fast defense, look like they were loafing or running in mud. It's only because the elements, Tariq Hill is fast. I don't care if he had quicksand and ankle weights on. He's fast (laughs) regardless. So no matter what, his speed and the difference in his speed and everybody else only get magnified when the elements are different. We remember Gail Sayers. We talked about how he was a great mutter. Well, Tariq Hill is a great mother, you know what. Bart Scott joins us here on Sunday Morning Football, looking ahead to today's championship game, specifically in the AFC. So the Patriots have been dominant at home this season, haven't lost. Yep. And on the road, they've been terrible. I mean, yeah. the Lions smashed them. The Titans smashed them. You had them lose in the division on that fluky, crazy Dolphins play. They were five losses in the division, lost in Pittsburgh. None of those teams made right. the playoffs. Why? How can you explain how different they are home and away? Well, because you have all the advantages, right? You understand home field advantage is a home field advantage for a reason. But also you have the crowd. The crowd is always going to be quiet. They're very smart fans up in in, in New Providence, Boston, that area, the New England area. But you don't have those advantages where the advantage goes to the opponent where Brady can't make all the checks because it's hard to communicate. You can't hear. And also the energy in the stadium. Arrowhead has consistently been one of the loudest stadiums, indoor, outdoor, period. And that's real decimals. You know what I mean? Those are real things. This is not manufactured because, you know, my my owner owns computer chips like in Seattle where they create something that bounces up and bounces down. <laughs> Kansas City, all they care about is football. They love football. They're going to bring the noise. They're going to be loud. And Brady's going to have to adjust to it. I remember the last time they lost in this situation. It was in Denver. Similar situation. Von Miller was a game wrecker. He wrecked Tom Brady. He was able to, they were able to neutralize Gronk. And I think that the Kansas City Chiefs have the pass rushers that can neutralize this offense as well, which means it may come down to big plays, turnovers, and explosives. So Cordero Patterson, can he give you something in, in the special teams game? You know, you talk about the thirds of the game. Fake punt. We saw a fake punt change the momentum of the game with the Saints. What's going to happen? I can't wait to watch, but I tell you what, I will throw up in my mouth a little bit if the Patriots win because I'm tired of seeing the same movie. <laughs> yeah. You and most of America outside of Boston feel the same exact way. Bart Scott joining us. My man, appreciate the time. Enjoy the games. I have no life. I wish you would come over and invite me over, but I understand that we're just work friends. Don't say that, Bart. Bart Scott, former Pro Bowl linebacker, a guy that was in the middle of that Patriots run for so long, playing for the Baltimore Ravens, who always stood toe-to-toe with the Pats, then also the New York Jets, of course, as we mentioned before.